remind everyone that Robert is taking, uh, and Jojo, by the way, I appreciate Jojo. He's driving the bus tomorrow to take the kids down to Marble Falls Church Camp. And uh, I sincerely appreciate the work that has been uh, involved in getting it ready and doing that. And I appreciate, let me say to all of you who gave a special offering, uh, we were able really to raise all the money that it would take for the kids to go to camp. So I appreciate your, your uh, generosity. And uh, it's a great uh, blessing to be able to send the kids off to church camp and be able to pay for it without uh, any, you know, uh, any other special offerings needed. Um, anyway, I appreciate them very much doing that. Uh, I, but uh, Robert, I will tell you, the work is just beginning, okay? So what time are, will the bus pull out tomorrow? What time will the bus be pulling out? 9.30. 9.30. So the kids need to be here no later than 9 o'clock yes, to get on the bus. So you'll need to bring uh, their uh, whatever uh, they're going to take. Uh, but they'll be leaving at 9.30. So be here by 9 o'clock and get uh, ready and on board and ready to go. Uh, it is our prayer that these kids, some of them are some of the Pee Wee football kids that uh, Robert has uh, coached and stuff. Uh, it's our prayer that they'll uh, get saved if they're not saved, that the Lord might call them into his work. Uh, it is a, an honor. I, I couldn't encourage a young person any stronger than I know, you know anything. I think being a preacher and a pastor is the highest and most noble calling that your child could ever attain to. Uh, whatever they do on the side, you know, they might be a doctor, a lawyer, a banker, a businessman. Uh, that would be great. Uh, but I pray God will also call them to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Get them the very best education that you can get them. Right. And help them to be able to make a living to get along in life. But to be a preacher of the gospel, a missionary, that is the greatest thing that they can attain to. All right? And that's not just because I've spent, maybe it may be, I've spent 50 years of doing this. And man, I tell you, it's been a wonderful journey. An absolute wonderful journey. Met some of the most wonderful people in the whole world. Uh, it's just been great. But the title of the message is, The Best is Yet to Come. <laughs> the Best is Yet to Come. It's been a wonderful journey. But I'm looking forward to some more good things ahead. Wow. <laughs> it's my prayer that these words will be an encouragement to you. And if you are watching by way of YouTube. I pray also that you will be blessed by this message. In Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. Boy, I've been saying the wrong things all morning, so I could have already led you astray. <laughs> One time I had Abraham in Moses' tomb. <laughs> <laughs> So I do mess up every now and then. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 33. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, speak to the children, children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him uh, for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, he took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that 
taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. Same result. But thou hast delivered thy soul. When I read that and began to think about that particular uh, message and the responsibility, I remembered the words of Cain when the Lord spoke to him and he said, where's your brother Abel? Cain's response was, am I my brother's keeper? Am I responsible for him? For over 50 years, we have been preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. 35 years have been right here at this church. For over 50 years, we have been listening to men and women as they too have preached and proclaimed the word of God. We not only have been preaching, but we have been listening along the way. Throughout that period of time, I have heard many preachers preach on the subject of eschatology. Preaching on the subject of eschatology. Which means the study of last things. Or the book of Revelation, a lot of people like. The book of Daniel. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, Jesus speaking on last things. Some of those preachers, teachers, have pointed to others as uh, that they thought was probably the Antichrist. In those 50 years, I've heard it many times. Many of them are gone. And so are the Antichrists. They're gone. They would have swore that they were the Antichrist. And this is the reason why. Some, through those 50 plus years, have pointed to certain dates that they tabulated as the time of the rapture or the second coming or the great tribulation. Those dates have come and gone. Jesus said these words, No man knows a day nor hour in which the Son of Man will come. Amen. No one knows that time. That time is in the Father's hand alone. Recently, it has been the topic of much YouTube discussion. I'm saying that to you because I know many of you watch the YouTube and you listen to it, so I know that you're hearing it. Some good people have been living in fear. They've been living with fear for what is called the Great Tribulation. Some people, Janelle, want to move to the country to some distant, remote area and live the way all Americans used to live. <laughs> Called farmers. David Koresh did that. I grew up on and around farming. 
I don't remember anything but hard work. Amen. Milking cows twice a day, early in the morning. And then in the evening, here they'd come moseying back in and somebody had to milk them again. Plowing fields, usually with a wore out tractor. I remember the first time I drove a tractor, I was six years old and I had a wreck. <laughs> Plowing fields, planting crops, fertilizing, and praying for rain. That's all part of farming. And then guess what? You get to do it all over again. That's right. Cleaning the chicken coops. That's a lot of fun. Oh, Gathering eggs every day. That was my job as a boy. Gathering corn in the corn cribs. My brother George and I used to have corn cob fights in the corn crib. <laughs> Feeding the cows. Feeding the chickens, slopping the hogs. Boy, I want to move to the country. Stacking hay in the barn in July. Keeping the old tractor running, keeping the equipment repaired. Well, I get my retirement check every month from the government that's try that I think is out to get me. Oh, yeah, ladies, I got one for you. I want you to move out there with me, ladies. It's canning time. Time to can the corn. Go out and chuck the corn, take the knife and slice the corn off the cob, put it in, a, in, in jars, quart jars, and can it. What about the beans? It's time to sit around and snap the beans, string the beans. Golly, I'm getting more and more want to move out there. Yeah. What about beets? If you're going to live out there with me, you got to can beets. Amen. I love beets. <laughs> tomatoes. Oh, I love tomatoes. And pears. Oh, we got to have pears. And cucumbers, ladies. I got to have you put up some cucumbers and pickles. And peaches if you live in Texas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for us to smell the roses and count our blessings. Amen. Stop complaining Amen. and count your blessings. That's right. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun to me, don't you? Let's just move out to the farm. <laughs> My dear friend, God has been very good to you. And he's good all the time. Amen. And I have some good news. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Paul said, think on these things. Things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and good. And anything that is virtuous, think on these things. Yeah. The Old Testament prophet Ezekiel gave the people a fair warning. And now in the 21st century, it is our time, the church, that we too must give a message of hope. A fair warning. Jesus is coming. Amen. And I'm of the opinion he's coming real soon. But I'm not, and I'm refusing to live in fear. Amen. For over 50 years, we have been living and believing and telling others that Jesus saves. Right. All the while, all the while, looking for the soon return of Christ. Right. First, uh, First Thessalonians 4.16 uh, tells us that he is coming in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. I mean, the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. Hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. We have been listening for all those years for that trumpet sound. Yes. I think it'll be quite unusual, but I'm listening for it. Amen. 
we, amen, we've been looking up because we believe the scriptures when it says our redemption draws near or nigh. It has been our belief and our message that Jesus is coming real soon. For ready or not, here he comes. He's given us a fair warning. We here at Messiah Baptist Church have been actively telling the world around us that Jesus saves. We are not, and we must not, grow weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And aren't you glad we're baptizing six folks today? Amen. Six more that the devil can't have. Amen. Over these last couple of years, a lot of things have changed. Some good people that we have loved have gone on to heaven. Some churches have closed their doors very unfortunate. Some good people, some good people have fallen to the temptations of the world. Amen. And even the political scene has changed dramatically. Yes. But through it all, <laughs> I have good news. The best is yet to come. Because God is in control. God's not in heaven wringing his hands. I wonder what they're going to do next. God is in control. Jesus is coming. Don't be afraid. In fact, be the very opposite. Live with courage and strength and faith. Don't live in fear. For you are more than a conqueror through Christ. He is the one who gives us our strength. Resist Satan. He will flee from you. He's a coward. Amen. Call him out. Put on the whole armor of God. That's right. Amen. Deflect. Deflect the fiery darts of the wicked. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. God's word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Amen. No good thing will God withhold from you. Yes. All, listen to this word, all, and no matter what language, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. The gift of God is eternal life. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such, they have written no laws. Amen. I mean, you don't get arrested for doing good things. You, you listen to this. I don't want to exchange what I got for some pie-in-the-sky dream. You have been blessed beyond measure. God has adopted you into his family. Your name, hallelujah, has been written down in glory. You are written in the Father's will. Did you hear me? You're written in the Father's will. I've been a pastor for many years. I've seen when people have been taken out of the will. It's so sad. Amen. But your name is written in your Father's will. It, in your Heavenly Father's will, it cannot be erased. It cannot be removed. Hallelujah. And your Heavenly Father is very rich. His grace is sufficient to meet and even exceed all of your needs. In fact, I think it's said like this. Your cup runneth over. 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. My dear friends, we are not blind to what is happening in the world. But neither are we blind to the goodness and blessings of God. They far outweigh what's going on in the world. Learn to trust in the Lord with all your heart. I wrote this little tidbit here. Some people can't see the forest for the trees. God has blessed you over and over and over and over again. There are still. Sweet Maddie, you just look so sweet sitting there. I want to give this to you. There are still some very beautiful songs to be sung. There are wonderful sermons yet to be preached. Yes, there are prodigals that need to come home. Oh, yes. And there are lost sheep that still need to be found. Yes, sir. You and I, this is a little play on words, so don't get your eggs out. <laughs> you and I have been commanded to go down into the basement and hide. No, my friends, Jesus said for us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. That's why we support missionaries. Every one of those papers is someone we support all, every month. Every month. Amen. That's why we started the YouTube ministry. It's so we could reach out beyond just our, our city limits. We can reach out in different parts of the world to which I say hallelujah. And I also say what Joseph said. What Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. Hallelujah. We are still baptizing those who have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So my admonition is this. Let us hold fast the words of life that in the day of Christ, we may rejoice. Yes. He or she that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Yes, oh God. My dear friends, God has good plans for you. Amen. And as far as this church is concerned, it is my belief that the best is yet to come. Amen. We are looking up. We are patiently waiting. We are listening for the sound of the trumpet. Amen. But we will work till Jesus comes. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this lesson, for these words, for this warning that we can give today to the people of the 21st century. Lord, let us be a trumpet, let us be a sounding uh, uh, brass, whatever it is, to warn the people, you are coming. And I pray that everyone in this room is ready to meet you. And if not, Father, I pray that they'll get ready. And then Lord, those who are listening by way of YouTube, I pray that you might touch their heart, that the Spirit of God through this message might touch their heart. They might put their faith and trust in you. And if they live in some faraway place, Lord, may they find a church and a good pastor that will baptize them and help them as they grow and mature in the things uh, uh, of the Lord. I pray, Lord, we send out this message. We send out the fair warning. I pray for people to hear, to believe, and trust in you. In the name that's above every name, we ask these things. In the name of Jesus, amen. Would you stand with us, please? We'll sing just a couple verses of invitation. What number is it? Uh, number 300.